The process of achieving a perfect fret job is not as complicated as some people will have you think. It's really pretty simple. You will need a few specialized tools, but nothing that complex. I always begin by beveling the edges of my frets. I use a file that's attached to a block of maple at a 35 degree angle. Next, I'll use a homemade notched straight edge to check to make sure that the fretboard is absolutely perfectly level. If necessary, I'll adjust the truss rod to get the fretboard level. To protect the fretboard, I cover it with masking tape. This is an optional step that you might find handy the first time you level frets. Mark the tops of the frets with a sharpie. Any color will do. To level the frets, I use 320 grit sandpaper which is attached to a precision ground heavy steel beam. I run the uh, beam back and forth across the frets, making sure that I follow the radius of curvature. Once I've removed all of the Sharpie marker from the tops of the frets, I know they're pretty level. It doesn't take very long to accomplish this, even with 320 grit paper. Since the process of leveling flattens the tops of each fret, I have to go back in and recrown them. I'll use a diamond coated recrowning tool. This tool has two grits, 150 and 300. Most of the work I do is with the 300, but if I get a really high fret, I'll use the 150. This is another optional step where I use small straight edges to check three frets at a time to see if they're level. If the straight edge rocks like a teeter-totter, I know that the middle fret's high, so I'll grind it down with my fret crowning tool until it's nice and level. To remove the marks left by the fret crowning tool, I'll start with some 400 grit paper wrapped around a narrow block of maple which has a groove in one edge. I just wrap the paper around the block and then place the groove right over the fret. I'll sand each fret the same number of strokes so that I don't mess up my leveling job. After each fret, I'll shift the sandpaper over to a fresh spot before moving on to the next one. After I finish with all the frets, I'll move up to 800 grit and do the same thing all over again. At this stage, a slight burr has formed on the beveled edge, so I'll take a small file and run it around the edge to get rid of that burr. Notice how I change the angle of the file as I move it around the beveled edge. This helps you to remove the burr while at the same time keeping it round and smooth so it's comfortable to play. After cleaning off that burr from the beveled edge, I'll go over the frets first with some medium and then some extra fine steel wool to get it really nice and smooth and ready for buffing. To polish my frets, I use a buffing machine, but you can also do this with a Dremel and a small buffing wheel. It works just as well, but takes a few minutes longer. There's always a little bit of residue that gets under the masking tape, but that's easy to remove with a little bit of naphtha, which is also known as lighter fluid. A little bit of lemon oil on the fretboard and this neck is ready to be installed on a guitar.